Hi, Ken1171 here, and in this video, I want to show you a new script I have created to solve a very old problem that existed in Poser for a very long time, and that is to transfer morphs from figure to clothing. So let's open the Dial Master and take a look on the scene to see, uh, for example, this figure here. If I select the body, she has 508 morphs uh, total. And from those, if I filter by the ones that are not zero, 14 of those make this shape you see here, including the head and the body. And on the, the figure on the right, there are 13 morphs that were dialed to make this shape. And if I disable the filter, the, she has 372 morphs on the body to choose from. Uh, from those, only 13 are in use. And that's going to be important in a minute. So traditionally, if you want to transfer morphs in Poser to make the clothing fit the figure when morphed, you come here, you select the clothing. I have selected the shirt. And then you come here to figure, copy morphs from, and then uh, the figure is correct. And if you look here, you will have the 500 morphs uh, list, and you have to disable all selections by clicking select none. And then you have to remember which morphs you have used and find them in this long list of hundreds of morphs and check only those. Um, and be careful because whenever you select a morph that the figure is not using, you're using more memory for no purpose. And if you forget to include a morph that the figure is using, the clothing is not going to fit. So um, I always found this process cumbersome and very tedious. And to solve that, to help with that, I have created a new morph transfer script that I called the Automorpher. So what this do is, first, you have a list of all figures on the scene, which is the list of figures you're going to be copying morphs from. It automatically populates the list with what you have on the scene. And you have the list of whatever each of those figures is wearing, conforming clothing. So uh, the, the figure on the left, which is Don one, is wearing uh, T-shirt one and pants one. You can also select those things directly from the viewport here. For example, I select the pants. It shows the pants here. If I select the shirt, it selects the shirt. If I select the shirt from the other figure, it automatically selects the figure and the shirt. So you can use selections directly from the scene, or if you find it easier, select it from the lists. And then you have some transfer options, and I want to discuss the first one, uh, this one here. Copy only the morphs that are in use. So if I go back to the first figure, uh, from the 500 morphs on the figure, only 14 are in use. That's what this means. Copy only those that are in use. Uh, reason being that it makes no sense to copy to the clothing morphs that the figure is not using, because it will have no effect. It's going to bloat your scene. You are copying morphs that the figure and the scene are not using. So this is going to minimize the amount of morphs we're going to transfer. So I have selected this figure on the left and this shirt. And then you click the only button you have here, which is transfer morphs. Take a look what happens. Boom, it has copied the morph. But take a look here. Only five morphs have been copied. But weren't they like 14? Yeah, the, here's the thing. The automorpher looks at the figure, checks which of these morphs actually affect the geometry on the, the clothing you are copying it to. And it goes group by group and checks, for example, this group here, which morphs actually affect only these four. And then this color here, the sleeve, only these three. And then the neck, only this one. So not only it's copying only the morphs that are in use, but it goes part by part, analyzing at morph delta level, which means a very low level, 
it does a deep analysis to what these morphs actually affect on the geometry level. So it only copies the morphs that actually affect the geometry, which is very, very efficient using less memory. And uh, by doing so, it doesn't slow or bug your scene with things that serve no purpose. So that's one way to do things. Another way is, for example, from this figure, I want to transfer morphs to everything. If I select the last option here, it says all. From this figure, I want to copy morphs to everything this figure is wearing, meaning all the conforming clothing that's on the figure. And if we do that, you'll see that it does everything at once. So if you want, you can do it by conforming clothing one by one or to everything the figure is wearing at once if you just select all on the target. Now, there is another way to do this, which is, let me show you what I showed you on the first figure on the second where nothing is conformed. She's also using a conforming hair, which means that's also going to receive more from the figure, only the ones that apply to the head. So selecting the figure, I'm going to select all and click transfer. If you look what happens, it transfer all the morphs that affect the geometry, the actual geometry on the pants, on the shirt, and on the hair. And uh, in total, there were only 13 morphs from the 300 we had originally. So it does it very intelligently. Uh, it's, it's a smart copy and it's pretty quick. Now, one more thing I want to show you, I need to revert the scene to how it was before. So I come here to File, Revert. Yes, I revert it back to how it was before. This takes a little while, almost there. Here you go. This is how we started, right? So if on the source figure, I select all, it automatically selects all for the target. This means, for all figures on the scene, I want to copy all their morphs to everything each figure is wearing, all in one go. So if I click the transfer morphs now, take a look what happens. It's thinking, thinking, boom. It has copied all the morphs to all the clothing and uh, to the conforming hair as well. And it has copied 21 morphs out of the hundreds that the figure have because it does it intelligently. So you can do it in one shot, like I just showed you, per figure or to the entire scene, to all figures on the scene at once. There is one more option I want to show. I need to revert the scene back to how it was before. So I'm going to revert the scene once more. There is one more thing I want to show you here, which is this option here. By default, this option here is enabled. Copy only morphs in use. Those are the transfer options. You only have two, but the combination of those two can do a lot. So, so far we have been copying uh, everything that uh, is in use directly to the clothing. And uh, when this option is enabled, which is by default, copy only morphs in use, it only copies the morphs that you have dialed on each figure. But I have another option here. If I enable a uh, uh, use keyword filter, you'll notice now I can type on this text box here. And if I type, for example, body, uh, let me select the first figure and the shirt. If I select aura, all to everything she's wearing, I want to copy only the morphs that have body in the name. If I transfer now, you'll see it does a partial morph transfer. Uh, you'll see that uh, some parts have poked through, meaning it has copied only three morphs at the only ones that have body in the name. If I disable this and select all and transfer again, you'll see it didn't copy the ones that it already had before. It only added the five remaining ones that it didn't copy because I was filtering. So in addition to what I said before, it only copied the morphs that are not already on the clothing. It's not going to overwrite or anything. Uh, it looks at the clothing. If it already has it, it skips it. Let me just do one all to all again, just to end with a nice look. From here, you can see that uh, using this keyword filter, 
if you type in the exact name of the morph, you're going to copy only that one. Or if you use a partial name, for example, body, it's going to copy all morphs that have body in the name. So you can be very specific or very generic, giving you a lot of power to choose which morphs you want to transfer. But then at some point, you may be asking, hey, Ken, why can't I just copy the whole thing to the shirt? For example, if I go here to copy morphs from, um, I have to select the clothing. If I go here and copy Morse from, uh, why don't I just copy everything? So I, I can just ignore the list. Um, in general, that's not a good idea, especially when you have like over 500 morphs on the figure. You do not want to put all that on each conforming clothing that the figure is wearing. In this case, it's going to be the shirt and the pants and this one even on the hair. Reason being that from these hundreds of morphs, there are only like half a dozen being used and all the extras you're adding to the scene are going to first bloat the memory, bloat the scene, and create huge files when you save the scene to disk and potentially also slow down the entire scene for using a lot of resources uh, for no reason. You're not using any of those morphs, so it makes no sense to copy them all every time you transfer morphs. That's generally not a good idea, and also there is a good chance you may crash poser by adding too many things to the scene. So yeah, you can overwhelm poser by loading too many morphs, because remember, in this case here, you would be 500 morphs on the shirts, 500 on the pants, and that could potentially overwhelm Bowser and slow it down or even crash it. But there is another case that it's worth mentioning here. So if I select the leg here and do a side side, take a look here. There is a JCM on the pant that is only active when the leg is posed. That's how JCMs uh, in general work. They only are activated when we pose the figure. So in this case here, because the JCM was not used in that pose, uh, it didn't catch the JCM. So in that case, all you have to do is select the pants and transfer again. You'll see it catches now the JCM because it's in use. And take a look here. It has only copied that one morph. And the great thing of this is that at no point you have been presented with that huge list of morphs to choose from. As usual with my other scripts, you have the option to disable dockable, meaning that if I disable docking, you can drag the script anywhere over Poser is not going to dock. And if you enable it back, it docks uh, to the interface and becomes seamless with Poser. If you prefer, it's going to remember this setting next time you run the script. And uh, you have, as usual, the help button meaning it opens the PDF manual so you can get all the information about the script by clicking this button. It opens the PDF manual. And that's what I wanted to show you. Thank you.